And the first thing we want to do is load our, our red, green, and blue base image and do a hard stretch. Now, to do the hard stretch, we actually have to load each layer individually. So instead of using the scripts load files into a stack, I'm going to just go to File, Open, and go to the, uh, the Layer Open dialog and navigate to the folder where those files are living. And we want to grab the red, green, and blue. And if I select all three and click Open, in this case, rather than opening these as a stack, it's just going to open them one by one as individual documents. And to do the, the quick and easy hard stretch, which I, I frequently do just to kind of get going with something, uh, you have to open it this way. That if, you, if I even rename this background layer to something else, then Photoshop won't give me the option. But we now have our red, green, and blue on the tabs at the top. Each one's an individual document. And as I mentioned, I always work these in order. So I'm going to start with the red one. And I want to go to Image Mode. In this case, it's already an RGB color document, but it's 32 bits per channel. I want to change it to 16 bits per channel. And because I haven't done anything with this background layer, I get this dialog box where I can choose a method. And the method that will give me a nice, quick, hard stretch is Equalize Histogram. And just click OK. And there's our, our red layer, what will be our red layer, with a nice hard stretch on it. So let's go to the green. Again, we'll go to Image Mode 16 bits per channel. And it will give us the dialog box to choose Equalize Histogram. Click OK. Now we'll go to blue and do the same thing. Image mode, 16 bits per channel. And equalize histogram. This is a, it's a pretty blunt instrument using the equalize histogram. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it just plays havoc with the image, but it's quick and easy and it's worth trying. So now that we have our red, green, and blue is 16-bit, we need to get them all into one document. Now, there is an easy way to do that with the Move tool. And I'm going to start with green. And I'm going to tap. And actually, before I do that, let's just rename this. I'll double-click on background. Name this green so that we don't get confused later. I'll go to the blue. Double click on the word background, type blue. And just to be consistent, we'll go to the uh, red channel, double click on the background layer, and name it red. Now I can go to the green, tap V for the move tool, and it turns into a uh, an arrow. And what I want to do is just click and drag. It's the easiest way in the world to copy from one document to another. Uh, there's a little trick to it, though. You click in the image area and hold the mouse button down and drag up to the tab of the file that you want to copy it to. Keep the mouse button pressed down. Pull your mouse down into the image area. And since we want this to paste aligned to the same way it was to start with, I need to press and hold the Shift key. Now I can release the mouse button, release the Shift key, and you can see we've now added the green layer on top of the red layer. It feels a bit like a, a dance the first time you do it, but after you've done it a few times, it's really quite easy. Now we'll just go to the uh, blue document. Again, click. Drag up to the red tab, drag down into the image, press and hold the shift key, release the mouse. Now we have red, green, and blue all lined up. And I'm just going to go ahead and close the documents that we're not using.
So close the blue. You know we don't need to save it. Close the green. No, I don't need to save it because these are we're really just kind of throwaway moves. But you can probably guess what I'm going to do at this point. I'm going to tap for each layer. I'll select each layer, tap Control G to put that layer in a group. Do the same thing with green. Do the same thing with red. So if I want to, we could put a levels adjustment in here and, and tweak these. Uh, for this one, we can really just jump straight into to color mapping. I'll go to the top group now. And rather than going to layer and blending options, you can also double click in this area to the right of the name. If I double click there, it will bring up the advanced blending dialog box. And this is the, the blue group. So we want to turn off red and green, leave just blue. Go to the red layer, or I'm sorry, the green layer. Double click to pull up that dialog box. I mentioned this is an, an older laptop and it's kind of huffing and puffing tonight. So there's the green. We simply turn off red and blue. And you notice we don't have to do anything with red because this bottom layer has all three, red, green, and blue. We're really simply replacing the green with this layer and the blue with this layer. Now, at this point, it wouldn't be the end of the world if you just flattened this file uh, because we haven't really made any creative decisions so far. It's just been kind of turning the crank on the process. But since we're talking about non-destructive, let's make this into a smart object. And to do that, I'll select all of the layers and all of the groups, and I can go to Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. A smart object is like flattening or merging layers in that it gives you, it resolves everything and gives you what that layer looks like when it's all merged together, but it's keeping all of the components intact. So a smart object has a, a little badge icon on the layer thumbnail that tells us that that's a smart object. And it's a little small and hard to see, but it's right there. And the beauty of that is twofold. One, if I double click on that, it will reopen all of the original data that was in there, no matter how complicated it was, and let me make edits. And then when I close that, it will save it back into the smart object with the changes intact. The other thing it does is it supports smart filters. So we mentioned earlier that star exterminator is a filter. If I run that filter, on a smart object, it will run as a smart filter. Now that'll take a few minutes for this document. So rather than doing that, I'm just going to abandon what we've done so far. And we'll go someplace where I have already done the work. There's the base image with the smart object. And you'll notice that the smart filters show below it. And if I had run more than one filter, they would show in succession with the first one at the bottom and then the middle and, and so forth. You can change the order of the filters. If you want, if you need to, you can turn individual filters on and off, or we can turn the whole smart filter on and off. So if I turn it off, that's with the stars intact. And if I turn it back on, that's filtering out the stars. So, you know, non-destructive, uh, easy to, to change our mind if we want to go back and adjust the color balance of this. You just double click on the uh, smart object, make your changes, and when it saves, it will put everything back into the smart object. So we said we were going to stretch the, the data twice. For the second one, for the arc signage, we do want to load red, green, and blue into uh, layers. So for that, we will choose scripts. It'd be nice if I picked the right. Load files into stack. And now again, we want to browse. Pick our red, green, and blue. Click OK. Click OK. And again, now Photoshop will go through and load the red, green, and blue 
as individual layers within one document, and these will be unstretched. And just incidentally, if you're actually doing this for yourself, if you open red, green, and blue twice, uh, the Photoshop may get confused and not want to open the same document more than once. So that's one of the reasons I needed to save the individual red, green, and blue and close those before I open them here as a stack. Uh, if you copy them into something and save it with a new name, you won't have that problem. Let's look at our layer or our image mode. And we are RGB, but we're 32 bits. We want to get this 16 bit. So I'll change to 16 bit. And this time it just says, do I want to merge these three layers? Nope, still don't want to merge them. And because this is kind of a throwaway process, uh, I'm just after the stars and some of the detail in the core. I'm not even going to put these into groups. I'm just going to very quickly go into the uh, layer blending dialog and map these to red, green, and blue. So the first one, yeah. Notice that my order is is wrong here, and it, that would probably trip me up somewhere. So I'm going to put them red, green, and blue just because that's the way I'm used to working. Open up the, open up the blue first. And again, it, it shouldn't matter uh, because all three have all three. But for the blue, I'll turn off the uh, red and green. For the green, I'll turn off and I'm double clicking out here to the right of the file name rather than going to layer uh, blending options, layer style blending options. Turn off blue and red to get green. And now we have a, a dark but color image. And I need to make a couple monochrome copies of this to, to follow the, uh, the arc sine H method. So, I will first I'll do a shift control alternate E. And that's the thing that merges all visible into a single layer. And now I can desaturate this and quick shortcut for that is shift control U to desaturate a layer. And then I need to make another copy of this control J. And all these instructions are on Mark Shelley's website. Uh, I am kind of going through this fairly quickly. This top layer I want to put into divide blending mode. That Photoshop has, remember I said lots of ways for layers to interact and blending mode is one of those. The default is normal. There's a group that generally darken what's below. There's a group that uses this to lighten. There's a group that will both darken and lighten. There's some specialty calculations and then there's just hue, just saturation, just color and just luminosity. So for this, we want the top layer to be in divide blending mode. And then the middle layer, I will put that into a group and I'll put the whole group into multiply blending mode. So in effect, we're multiplying by something and then we're dividing by that same thing. And that thing is just a monochrome copy of what's below. Now I can go to the layer inside the multiply group. And here's where I would add in a, a curves adjustment layer. And Mark Shelley has kindly provided some, some presets that have various strengths of the arc sine H stretch. For this one, the arc sine 100 works pretty well. And that gives me a more gentle stretch. You can see some of the detail in the core. But the real advantage is that it preserves the color and the, keeps the stars as small as possible. And you will notice if you zoom out, it starts to look real raggedy and ugly. Uh, it's when you zoom in, it will suddenly smooth out. If you make a, a stamped copy of this, it will come out smooth. It's really just the way Photoshop looks at it. So at this point, we, I said we want to remove the stars because what we're really after here are the stars. So I will do a shift control alternate E again to create a stamped copy. And let's go ahead and name this one uh, stretched. 
and then I'll duplicate this again. And this is the layer I want to remove the stars from. So I would go to filter, star exterminator, and run star exterminator on this layer to remove the stars, leaving the, uh, the starred layer intact below. And again, we've already done that. So this is what you'll get. You'll have the star, starred layer that's stretched. And then on top, where we ran star exterminator, we'll have a starless layer. To get just the stars, we need to subtract the starless layer from the starry layer. And I can turn that. That's what the starry layer looks like. That's the starless layer. Again, if we go to our friend, the blending options, and let's choose subtract, that lets us see just the stars. But remember, we're just looking at this through a subtract mode. We're seeing it, but it's not really there. And we want to preserve this. So I will do a shift control alternate E one more time. And that will create a stamped layer of just the stars. And I'm going to label this stars. So now we have a stars layer. And I'll go back to my starless layer and put it back into normal blending mode. These are really the only two things we want from this document. The rest of it will throw away. And what we want to do is put those into our base layer on top of this starless image. So to do that, I've selected both layers. Again, we'll go to the Move tool, click, drag, drag into the image area, hold the Shift key, release the mouse key. Now I'll just quickly throw the stars into a group with Control-G and put that group into linear add or linear dodge blending mode. And let's turn off the starless layer. So there's our base layer without stars and with nice, small, colorful stars as opposed to the, the big bloated blown out stars that it started with. If we want to bring some of the detail into the core area, I can go to our starless layer. And what I want to do initially is just hide everything and reveal just some of this. So I can go to layer, layer mask, hide all. And that created a layer mask. You can see the thumbnail for the layer mask is next to the layer icon. And we can see that it's filled with black. And what we want to do is just grab the brush tool, tap B for the brush tool. Tap the D key to ensure we have foreground and background colors. And we want white because we want to reveal some of this. And we want to do it at a fairly low opacity. And you can tap a number key that if we look up in here, you can see the opacity is at 10%. If I tap the five key, it would go to 50%. The zero key would go to 100%. Let's just start at 10%. And with a nice big soft brush, we'll just paint with white on that layer. And what we're doing is just putting some of the detail from the light stretch over top of the, the darker stretch. If I went too far, if I want to take back some of that, all I have to do is tap the X key to switch to black. And painting black on that layer mask will hide some of what I just revealed with white. So that gives us our base RGB image. And at this point, we would be ready to, to dig into the uh, narrow band data. So let me close our light stretched image. Narrow band data. I know this is what the, the title said we were going to do. We'll go to the scripts, load files into stack. And this time, when we browse, we want to pick up the narrow band files. So we'll grab hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Click OK. Click OK. And as we did before, Photoshop is going to load these three layers into one document with each one on its own layer. So we'll have a layer of hydrogen, a layer of oxygen, and a layer of sulfur. 
And you can probably guess already what we're going to do. We're going to first we'll organize those because just like I like red, green, and blue organized in a certain order, I, I always like my narrow band lined up with hydrogen on the bottom and sulfur on the top. It doesn't matter what order you have them in. That's just the order that I'm used to working in. And if I work in the same order all the time, it just keeps me from getting confused. So it's almost done loading. And again, the odd thing, you never know for sure what order it's going to actually load the files in. I'm not sure how it decides. Uh, it does have, it looks like hydrogen on the bottom, but we've got sulfur in the middle. So I'll just click on the sulfur layer and drag it up to the top of the layer stack. So we have sulfur on top. Tap control G successively for each one of these to drop them into a group. Let's check to see our image mode. And we are grayscale, but 16 bits. So let's convert to RGB color. No, we don't want to merge. And if we want to just quickly throw a levels adjustment layer in here to maybe pull down the, the dark level a little bit, we can do that with, I'll start with sulfur, turn off the visibility of that group, go to the oxygen layer, add a levels adjustment, do the same thing, turn off the visibility, go to the hydrogen, throw an adjustment layer in here, darken this one a little bit. Now we can do some, some color mapping. And let's start with an HOO. I'll turn on the oxygen. And you're probably already guessing. I'm going to go to the advanced blending options. HOO, we want hydrogen for red, green and blue for oxygen. Oxygen is currently all three red, green, and blue. Just turn off the red. And we have an HOO image just like that. If we decide we do now, we really want to try, maybe we want to try an HSO. I can turn the sulfur layer on, bring up its advanced blending dialog box. For HSO, we would have sulfur mapped to green. So we'll turn off red and blue. And now we have an HSO image. If we want a Hubble palette, SHO, I'll go back to the uh, sulfur first. And naturally we want for, for SHO, we want red from sulfur. And then from the oxygen, Right now, we have both blue and green turned on. We really want just blue for oxygen. And we're going to let the hydrogen shine through with green. So we'll bring up this dialog box for the oxygen, turn off the blue. And there we have a Hubble palette, SHO. So just by changing those, those controls in the advanced blending, you can move back and forth quickly from one to the other. Typically okay. at this point, yeah. We, we asked a couple of questions. Okay. Okay, Matthew says, uh, what do you use for enhancing fine detail? And have you ever used the camera raw filters? I have. Um, and in particular, if you use the uh, smart object for the camera raw to feed into the camera raw filter, it's non destructive from the standpoint that you can create a, the smart object from those layers, open it in the camera raw filter, adjust clarity, contrast, uh, texture, whatever. Uh, negative dehaze, incidentally, really brings out fine nebulosity in, in light areas. Um, when you close the camera raw filter, it applies those filters to the smart object, but if you change your mind on something, you can just double click on the smart object on that camera raw filter and go back and revisit the settings again. So you enhance detail using the camera raw approach? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I use the uh, high pass filter. Uh, it just depends on the image. 
And with the high pass filter, do you use the starless image with the high pass filter? Typically, yes. Um, yeah, typically at this point, I would, uh, with narrow band, I almost always do the starless by layer. So I would duplicate each one of these starred layers and run star exterminator on each one of those, which would give me this result where I have for each each element both a starred and a starless. So you can you could do a high pass filter by uh, by element or in total. And do you ever go to the more traditional uh, color scheme? Yeah. For the Hubble palette. Yeah. And if you do that, how did you do it by adjusting the histograms? You can you can do it by adjusting the uh, histograms within these to to move you closer. Um, this is kind of a pure uh, SHO, and because Orion has so much hydrogen, especially in the area around it, it just comes out very green. So sometimes I embrace the green and just go with a green image. Uh, other times I will go on top of the top layer or the top layer group and add either color balance adjustment layers or hue saturation and you can you know start to massage those colors and move them around in fact so, one of the one of the videos in that set on my website uh, spends a little bit more time delving into the different ways of color mapping and then adjusting the uh, color mapping uh, what do you do about the star residues for a star exterminator um, I've got a couple different approaches. I don't think I've got a video specifically on that. Um, most of the time, it, it, usually you can take care of some of the, the big ones with the uh, spot healing brush. I don't like to do that because it is destructive, uh, but sometimes you just have to. Uh, most of the time what you get are smudges and the smudges are really kind of a lack of noise and texture. And you can fix those non-destructively by adding a uh, a noise layer and then painting, uh, you know, revealing that noise layer uh, in an overlay over the image and that that hides the uh, noise or hides the smudge. Okay, I think we're all set for now. Okay. So I know we're running long on time. So just very briefly, what I would do here is take my narrow band data that we have created starless images from. And again, since we haven't cropped anything, we can just plop that into this image, our kind of our base image, and I just close the group. And whatever layer you're on, when you drag something over, what you drag over will go on top of that. So what I wanna do is select the uh, kind of the light stretched image from our base image Go back to the narrow band. I'll just grab all three layers, tap the uh, V for the move tool, drag it over to our base image, drag back into the image area, press and hold the shift key, release the mouse. And now we have our SHO narrow band image with RGB stars that we can, of course, turn on and off. Kind of the, the last trick here is if we want to use the narrow band data to enhance our base image. So to do that, let's just quickly turn off those layer groups to get back to the original base image. And we saw there was a lot of oxygen detail in the narrow band in this area around the, the, the main nebula. So let's turn on our oxygen group, but we need to make a couple changes. First, right now it's mapped to just blue and we probably want it to be both blue and green to pick up cyan. So I'll just turn the green channel back on. Green and blue make cyan and that's kind of a usual color for oxygen. The other thing I wanna do is change this group from its normal blending mode to lighten blending mode. And what that will do, any place the oxygen layer is brighter than what's before, below it, it will add that detail. Anywhere it's darker, it won't change it. And then we can just visually adjust this by going to the levels adjustment layer within the oxygen group 
if we want to turn that up, if we want to kind of throttle down the dark area so it doesn't show up so much in the background. Uh, again, we can visually play with the balance. And usually once the stars are taken out, we have a lot more freedom to even move this, uh, this white levels adjustment. So that added some nice oxygen detail. We can do the same thing with, with I'm sorry, that added oxygen. We can add hydrogen. This time we do need to change the uh, advanced blending options on hydrogen because now we do want just the red and we can't depend on it just being the default of what's left over. So we'll turn off green and blue. And again, we'll make this group lighten blending mode so that we're just letting it lighten the image below. And again, we may want to play with the balance by going to that hydrogen group levels adjustment. We can make the hydrogen more or less dominant in the background. We can move the black point in and out if we want to you know, keep the background more dark or more saturated. The last piece we might add is from the sulfur. And here we're going to go a little bit different direction on the sulfur. It adds some nice detail and color in the core. So rather than lighten, in this case, we'll use darken blending mode. And we don't want to do it, at least to my eye, I don't want to do it everywhere. I want to do it just in the core area. So again, I'll go to layer, layer mask, hide all. And that gives me a layer mask that's black and hides everything. Tap B for the brush tool. And then I can tap X to make sure white is my foreground. We're at 10% opacity. And I can just paint some of this, what's now cyan from the uh, sulfur. So there's kind of a finished image. Uh, you know, I might play with overall color balance uh, to adjust the color balance, saturation, contrast, whatever to to tweak this image into its final Photoshop form, and then save this as a .psb file, which is the uh, Photoshop's large uh, document format. And it saves with all of these layers and adjustments intact, even the smart object for the original base layer. So I can come back to this later today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, change my mind, change how much hydrogen, maybe I don't want hydrogen at all, uh, you know, whatever the changes are, if I want a starless image, I can just turn the stars off. Uh, you've got lots of flexibility to do whatever you want.